Hello friends, welcome back. We are studying how to consume ASP.NET Web API using HTTP client. In this video, first of all, we are going to see how to consume GET request using HTTP client. So let us switch to Visual Studio. So uh, here I have created a console application. As I told you in the previous video that we are going to consume it in a console application first and then after we will see how to consume it in a MVC application also. Okay. So here I have already created one console application. It is having this one program class which is get added by default. And as I told you in the last video, the first step is to install a required package to use a HTTP client. So first of all, I'm going to install that package using NuGet package manager. So just go to tools window, say NuGet package manager and say package manager console. And here I'm going to install install dash package. And this is the package you have to install. Remember this thing, microsoft.aspnet.webapi.client. And then after you have to hit a enter key. So it may take a few seconds to install it and all the necessary packages are added. And here you can see that it is successfully installed. So now it is installed and we are ready to use HTTP client class in our application. So let me hide this. So the first step is to create an object of HTTP client class. So let us create it. So HTTP client, say client is equal to new HTTP client. So we may need to add a namespace. So first of all, we'll add the required namespace, which is nothing but a using system.net.http. Okay. So the next step is to specify the base address which is nothing but a uri of our web api so here i specify it using client dot base address property and to this you have to create object of uri class and to this uri class you have to specify the uri of your web api now what is that uri see in last videos we have already created an web api which is having the crude operation. So we are going to use the same web API here or you can say we are going to use the URI of that same web API. So here I am going to mention it. So first of all what I have to do to get that URI I have to open that web API application and I have to run it and from there from my browser address bar I can copy the URI. So let us open that application first. So this is our application that we have created in last video and here we mentioned one product controller which is having all the crude operations. So the same uh, product controller we are going to consume in our console application. So let me run this so we can copy the URI. So this is the URI. Let me copy it. Now let us switch to our application. Okay, so here we have to copy it. And as per our routing uh, rule, right, we have this API word also. So don't forget to put it. So as per your routing, you have to mention it. So here I am not going to specifically mention my product controller because this will be a base address. Whichever controller you are going to call that will be specified as a part of your get method, post method or put method. So don't put that specific controller name here. Okay. So we are done with this. Now the next thing is we have to give call to our get async method. So here we are going to call our get async method. So I have to say client dot get async. And then we have to specify the URI. Okay. Base address is already specified as part of this, this property. So here you have to just specify the controller name. So we are going to consume our product controller. 
so let me mention it here product controller now if you see our get async method returns a response so we are going to collect it so let us use implicitly type variable so say response task okay so in this variable we have collected our response now since this is a asynchronous method we want to complete this method before proceeding any operation so here i am going to say response task dot wait now the next thing is we have to collect the result of our response task so next is i am creating one result variable and here i am saying response task dot result okay now after collecting the result first of all i'll check whether my uri get successfully executed or not so for that i have to say whatever result we have collected a result has one property that is if result dot is success status code it will either return true or false if our method get executed successfully it will return true otherwise false now now if my success status code is true what is the next step we are going to read the data okay so the next step is to read the data so here i'll say where we are going to collect read result in read task is equal to result dot contain dot read as async okay and we are going to read a data of product type now if you remember our web api returns a data of product view model and if you are specifically executing the get request without any argument then it will return list of product view model so what i have to say here product view model and the array of it or collection of it so i'll put a two brackets open close square brackets and done now the next step is to wait okay why because this read async method read as async method is also what a synchronous method now here it is showing an error why because we don't have the definition of this class in our console application okay so the most important thing is we have to create this class so let me create this class so just right click over here say add class product view model now this class will have the same fields that are available in our web api so what i'm going to do i'm going to copy it from our web api so in our web api we have this product view model class right so i'll copy all this property and i'll paste it in our consuming console application so now i'm going to copy it in our console application okay so don't get confused here we have copied all the properties that are available in our web api application and i have pasted it why because my web api is going to give me a result of type product view model okay and again i am not passing any argument so definitely it will give me a list of product view model now after this okay the next step is whatever you get in the read task we have to iterate through it and since we are using console application we are going to write this data on the console okay so for that what you have to do say var products is equal to read task dot result so this result is nothing but what collection of product view model or array of product view models so we will iterate through it so for each product view model 
P in products. Okay. Now I am going to use console dot write line here. So here I'll say zero and just display ID and the name alone. Actually, it has too many properties, but we'll just consider this. So product ID and then p dot product. Okay, done. Okay, and if success code is false in that case we are going to display error message console dot write line error even you can enclose or wrap this entire code in try catch block also okay so we are done with this let us quickly revise first of all we install the package which is microsoft dot aspnet dot web api dot client and this is the version that get installed. Then we create an object of HTTP client class and for that we need system.net.http namespace. Then using base address we specify the URI of our web API. So just make sure whatever web API you have created, if it is on localhost, don't forget to run it. Get its IP and mention it. And as per our routing, there is one API keyword or word which is a fixed words that's why i added it and while giving call to your method you will specify the controller name so currently we are just focusing on get method so i give call to the get async method and i specify the controller name since it is a asynchronous request i'm waiting till the operation will complete after that collected the result we check whether the status code is success or not if it is so then we are reading our data using read as async method we are using get async method without any argument so this is going to return all the products that's why i put open close square bracket here which nothing but a array of product view model this is also again asynchronous operation so we are waiting it till it complete then we have collected the result and then using for each loop we are iterating through it so let me save my application my web api is in running state before running this application make sure your web api is in running state now whenever you run the console application just run it if you do not want to debug what you can do you can say start without debugging so i'm just selecting it okay we got the output so these are all our data which is already there in our database and we are just collecting it and using console application we are displaying it okay so i hope you understood this in the next video we are going to see how to consume post method and i'll just uh, request to you all just try a get method by passing a argument so in that case i'll just give you a hint in that case what you have to do here you have to pass an argument okay whatever is the value say one two if you want to get it from the user you can collect it in variable say you collected it in variable then you can build this uri something like this say suppose you collected it in variable you can mention that variable name here okay so in this way it will be dynamic so thank you for watching if you have any questions or any doubts you can definitely write it to the comment section Thank you.